Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at a 2018 Honda Accord that has a misfire. Apparently this misfire is a very difficult diagnosis. It's been to several shops. So we're here today to take a look at it for the shop that I do a lot of work for. And we want to diagnose this car correctly. So in order to do that, I want to go ahead and I want to put a scan tool on it and get some basic data so we have a diagnostic direction. So let's go Go ahead and get that scan tool installed. I have the scan tool data up. The first thing I want to see is I'm going from stoichiometric to a little rich. And my long term is good for the fuel, but the total term, that would be the short and long put together, is I've got some error there. I've got good vacuum, charging system is working, I've got a DTC set, and none of the monitors have been run. And that would make sense because they've been trying to fix this car for quite some time. So basically, I'm not worried about that. We're going to come over here and it says that cylinder four is misfiring, so I'm okay there. I want to look at the the data right here. This is from the freeze frame. And I want to look at basically my calculated load is at 14. So this is at real light, but I'm basically at 3,3800 RPM. But I don't have trims. Long and short aren't trimming right now when this code was set. So if I've got not a lot of trim, the first thing I'm thinking is, is it is ignition or it would be mechanical. Usually if I have some type of an injector and it's causing the misfire, I would think that I would normally have trim. So that's just my first thought. I still don't know, but this is probably something to do with the ignition system or the a mechanical failure. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to come over and we want to look at the the data and I can see that I'm taking away 14 and 3 so the total trim is 17 so I'm taking away quite a bit of fuel and when I take away that much fuel now I'm thinking maybe that might be an injection type problem um, when I'm taking away fuel like that that makes me think maybe I've got some kind of delivery issue I'm not sure but we know that the car is running a little rough right now it's running rough but apparently when this car gets under a load and the turbo spools up the car will just default and it doesn't want to pull at all so that's what we're really here to look at and the code is for uh, the cylinder for misfire I want to also go to my Mode six. I want to get some data here, so we want to come down. We want to pick Honda. We want to go ahead and run this. What I'm really interested in looking at here is the misfires. So these are my cylinder misfires and I can see cylinder four misfire. Um, I've got quite a few misfires, none of the other cylinders do. So again, that tells me that the car thinks that four is misfiring, mode six and the DTC are for four, but I never want to believe this data. I always want to prove which cylinder is misfiring. In order to do that, we're going to need to get a scope set up for this. So let's go ahead and get the scope set up so we can get some data that we can use to diagnose this vehicle. I've gone ahead and I've got the scope set up. I've got channel one yellow on the crank sensor. I've got channel two red, and that's for the number one ignition event. Then I've got channel three that's green, channel four that's blue, channel five that's white, channel six that's purple, and those are on cylinders one, two, three, and four. And then we've got channel seven and eight on the laugh sensor so we can get the air fuel mixtures per cylinder. So what we want to do is we want to go drive this thing and see what's breaking down and what's causing the car to default where it will barely run. So let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Now that we have the scope connected, let's go ahead and set it up. We have E-COPS and we have the E-COPS on three, four, five, and six. So now we have the E-COPS on three, four, five, and six. So now we're going to invert these and then we'll zero these. Now that should get everything set up to where we can read it. So now we want to come over here and we want to just get a little bit of data. 
want to shut this off and we want to come in and just sort of look at these waveforms real quick to make sure that they're okay. So cylinder one here, I've got quite a bit of turbulence right there on one. So one is green and I can see those turbulence in here. That's not normal for an idle. Um, definitely not. This is the one we're concerned with. This is four and it looks smooth across here. Um, again, one looks like we have a lot of turbulence in there. We have some turbulence here now. Let's shut that off. We can see the turbulence in four as well. A little bit on three. Uh, one's really got some turbulence going on. And we've also got some at four here. Um, this is the one I'm really worried about. Apparently, this is the one they say is missing. So what we're going to need to do is we want to sort of make sure, but we can see these turbulence in here. So what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and I want to just make sure we can run a algorithm that's going to change the crank. Let me show you this. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to come over here and we're going to take this crank. The yellow is the crank. This is the crankshaft sensor and this is our targets, these drops. What I want to do is I want to convert these into crankshaft speed and that's what this program does. So we're going to go 1342 and we're on trigger for one. We're going to get some data here and then we're going to shut it off and it'll process it. So this is our firing and we can see right here four is weak but it fired. Okay, so we're going to come in here and we're going to look at this. So here's four and we fired. Let me go over this with you. The pink marks is top dead center. So the crankshaft slowed down as it was compressing the air and then it fired that fuel and the crank sped its velocity up. Then it slowed down as it compressed the air, it fired and it sped up. Came down. Now this didn't have a big acceleration. Do you see how these are all much bigger? Even right here, four fired and four fired all the way up. This is a partial fire right here and this is a much better fire. Do you see how it came up? So we can actually find incomplete combustion events as well. So four just isn't having the same velocity changes as the other cylinders through here. Um, these aren't misfires, they're just, they're not firing really good. But four definitely looks like he's the one that's having a problem. Um, and again, this is the worst of them. So let's go ahead and get that data again, just real quick and just see if we can't see, make sure four is the one we're looking for. Remember that was what the scan tool said. Now right here we can see this guy didn't fire right here. So let's go over here. So right here we fired and it increased and slowed down. Now this didn't fire and it slowed down. It didn't go up with a partial. This is a miss. And this is sort of a partial or a miss, but again, that's four that's creating that problem for me. So four, and here we had a fire on four, and we fired four, and this fired four, and here four misfired. That's a miss. So now is what we know is four is missing while well, we're just sitting here. But I still want to see what the default thing is. So really what I need to do is we need to go drive the car with the scope connected. So let's go ahead and take this for a test drive. We're on our test drive now. And so now we should be ready to get the data. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to just start the data up. Let's make sure where the data is all present. So we're good to go. So now is what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start the, the scope. And we want to go ahead and just get this car under a little power and see if we can get it to miss. Okay, I can feel it missing right there and it's missing pretty good. So let's go up here and take a look at this and uh, see what we've got. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to take our zoom window. And we're going to zoom in right down here. I want to shut off the channels we're not using. I want to just look at the ECOPS first. And right away, I can see that this is really, really lean. That is cylinder one. 
and I've got something totally going on on cylinder four that's not normal. Do you see how big the tail is? How much energy is being reabsorbed by the coil is the downward movement of this waveform. So let's go ahead and what I want to do is I want to go in and we're going to look at these guys right here. And we can see right here that this one, this is cylinder one. Do you see how I came across and we, we had the primary start here and the primary built its magnetic energy up and then we shut the primary off. When the primary falls across the secondary, I have a very high, high induction. And this induction current is what is based off of uh, bridging that gap in the spark plug, the spark plug electrodes. Now this over here is the point of plasma right down here. And we get turbulence and those turbulence are normal um, under load. And then we come straight up and this is almost as big as the peak. This is a lean cylinder. We can also see how much bigger the tail is. That's how much energy it took once we couldn't bridge the gap anymore because the plasma starts to run out. The reason the plasma is running out is because we don't have a carbon base in there. The hydrocarbons or the gas is lean and so the plasma is made with that and since there's not as much carbon I don't have a good conductor. The conductor comes up and shows a very lean cylinder with a lot of energy to be recovered. Now do you see how this cylinder fired more normally? And this cylinder right here is three. And and I have a small tail and this is probably pretty normal with this turbulent right here but this just coming straight up like this that's lean. Now we have something going on over here we see we have a much bigger tail here and then I can't really see so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna zoom in on this one so I can blow it up. Okay do you see how high the point of plasma is right here and it would look like these are turbulence? Let's blow this up again. Do you see the point of plasma is way up here? Remember when I just showed you the other ones, it's all the way down here. This waveform, this isn't turbulence, this is a carbon arc. And this is arcing, and this did not go across the spark plug electrodes. You can tell by the amount of plasma, the turbulence, and how big this tail is. So guys, what I know right now is something's wrong with four. Four has some type of a problem. Um, the boots carbon track, the coil inside the coil, the plug, but this is a carbon trace and I'm sure of it. So this is some kind of a carbon trace and we can go ahead and we can zoom back out and we can go over here and take a look at some of these other guys and we can see how big, okay, this also, <laughs> That's a carbon trace. Do you see how now this isn't lean? Do you see how it, it arced and it came across and it's arcing? Same as that purple one. So one, cylinder one and cylinder four, both are carbon trace. That's what I can see here. And cylinder one is really lean because we can see that real quick rise and that's before it just takes a dump. Um, and you can see that four is carbon traced right here. Notice how big the tail is. So we can see how much energy is being reabsorbed. And we know now that that's a trace. We can see that we've got some lean cylinders here for sure. Okay, we got, we definitely have some carbon tracing going on here. Um, so that's what's happening. Okay, so now that I know that the misfire is being caused by a carbon trace, I can see that on cylinder one and cylinder four. We have misfires on four, but one's missing too, because that's a trace. So they've already replaced the plugs apparently several times. The coils have been set, replaced several times, but what the problem appears to be is the cylinder is lean. So the cylinder being very lean is my problem. So we need to go ahead and let's go ahead and open up the scan tool and what I want to do with the scan tool is I want to come over here and we want to run this data so I want to start this test right here and what this is going to do is tell me what my fuel trims are over load against long term and short term so we get a better idea if this is really lean or what's happening with our fuel trims so we'll go ahead and we're going to just roll up here
And the car is in a default right now. I see what they're saying when they said it runs really bad. Okay, so the car definitely is barely running, but we can also see that the trims aren't that far off from where we can see here. So what I want to do now um, is I want to go back to the shop and we want to go ahead and I want to pull the, the number one and the number four coils out and I want to get a look at those so I can figure out where the carbon trace is on them. And then we want to check the injectors because those cylinders look lean and they're probably so lean with a turbocharger that it's forcing so much energy to try to jump that gap under boost. It's making a trace. Maybe the, the coil's bad or the boot's bad or the spark plug's bad, but there's some kind of a trace on one and four. So let's go back to the shop and take a look at that. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get this coil out and get the plug out so we can try to figure out what's carbon traced on this car. Let's get the plug out and take a look at it. The plug definitely doesn't look like it's firing correctly. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, there's the carbon trace right there. You can see it right away. See the track right there? So that's carbon traced and that's the trace. So it's jumping from here down the porcelain to this ground. That's easier than to go across this spark plug opening when the cylinder's really lean and we have high pressure. So what we need to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out as well because one looks like it's bad. So let's just take a real quick look at it as well. Those boots and the coils don't look so bad. I don't really see traces there. But apparently there's been several sets of coils and plugs put in this vehicle, so that's what they, the shop is telling me, but I don't know that, that's just hearsay. What we can see is what we can do. Again, that plug doesn't quite look like it's firing correctly. Here's the, here's the trace right here, guys. Do you see that trace? That's a carbon trace. And we can definitely see these are new plugs they put in there, there's no doubt. Um, so we got two carbon trace plugs, and our carbon trace plugs are on one and four. So we, now I need to figure out why. So is what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and flow these GDI injectors and I'm gonna show you a real cool trick on how you can test these GDI injectors. So let me get that set up and we'll give that test. I went ahead and I put the spark plugs and the coils back in the vehicle, got it running. Now let me show you what I did. I went over and I got four of the eight wires. Each injector has two wires to control the circuit. I got the powers and I put them all through one amp clamp. So now is what I want to do is I want to come over here and we want to go ahead and pick the amperage, 20 amps, and I want to go ahead and zero that. And now what we want to do, turn all these others off, we're going to turn that guy on and we're going to go ahead and get the data. So these are the coil currents to each one of these. So what I want to do is I want to just zoom in on one and show you. This is where the current turned on and it goes through the winding of the injector and it comes up and then it comes over and it comes down. We can get even a little bit more zoom on this so you can see what it looks like. This is a good injector. 
The waveform looks fine. So I've got about eight and a half amps is about what I expect on these. So now what I can do is we can come out, we can see all of them are about the eight and a half amps. They're all formed the same. So what this shows me is the electrical circuit and the drivers are functional for all of these injectors. So now is what I need to do is I need to check the flow, the fuel flow rate through all of these injectors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this set up so we can do a injector flow test of these GDI injectors. So let me get that set up and then I'll show you how that's done. So what I've done is I've gotten into the primary pumps fuel rail and I'm reading that pressure and right here I'm reading about 56 and I set up a system directly charged from the battery to where I can come over and I can hit the relay so I can charge the rail and then I've unplugged the connector where the GDI injectors are and I've got power going to one and then the other lead is going to the scope and the scope is then grounded. So the current path is through the scope. This isn't even connected. So what we're gonna do is we are, we've got it charged, we're 56. I've got three seconds at a frequency of 50 and a duty cycle of 70. So we're gonna start this and we're gonna watch the gauge. So we dropped right to about 40, just a little above that. Now, if we were doing this kind of test on a regular injector, if you're more than one pound, you have a problem in the difference. These GDI injectors, they need to be dead nuts because when they run, they're at 500 to 3,000 pounds, so this is gonna be amplified, so we want to see it drop right to the same meter, same location. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead, and that was the injector for one. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move these to two. So now we're on two. We want to go ahead and we're going to charge our pump. And now we've got the pump charged. And now is what we want to do is we want to go ahead and drop the rail. And we're right at about 56. Okay, now that's a huge difference. Do you see that? So that's two. We dropped to 36. That shows me that we have a problem here. So something is wrong. So now I know that. So cylinder one was one of the ones that was way too lean. Cylinder two drops way down. Let's go ahead and we're gonna do cylinder three. So we want to go ahead and we want to charge our rail. Now we want to go ahead and we want to pressure drop that rail. Let that drop just a little bit. They were all about 56, that's about where we were. So now we want to watch that drop. And again, about 37. So those are even different from cylinder two to cylinder three. So now is what we want to do is we want to go to cylinder four. We're gonna go ahead and charge the rail. Okay, we've gone ahead and we've charged up four and we wanna let that drop a little bit. Wanna go ahead and drop that one. Oh, 
Okay, and so that one dropped about the same as the other one. So really we have two injectors that flow close but different. This one dropped more pressure as you can see. And one, it's really lean, it hardly dropped. And then two and three and four are closer, but they're still wrong. Now, when you're amplifying the pressures that these systems run under, these got to hit right on. And you can see that this set of injectors is going to need to be replaced. So what I've laid out is a plan, and hopefully you can see how you can test GDI injectors when they're coil style. Now, if they're a piezo stack, you can't do this. But with these style, you can, and it works real well. I've done it quite a few times. So normally, when the injectors are all right, they'll hit right dead nuts from drop to drop. These are all over the place. So is what's going to need to happen is we're going to need a couple of spark plugs that are going to have to re be replaced, and the set of injectors is going to have to be replaced. Then this car will be ready to return to the customer, and it will be fixed. What I want you to see is, is a whole way that I went about testing this. We saw that we had misfires and then we put a cop, an e-cop, or some type of a device where we can capacitive or inductively pick up from the coil where we can see the waveform. We could see what's happening. We have lean cylinders and we have some cylinders that have that it's got a carbon trace. And so four is carbon traced and one is. So that means the plugs are going to be replaced. Now they've already replaced the coils and the plugs several times on this car. The problem that they missed is the injectors are causing these car carbon traces. We're going to need to go ahead and we're going to need to put injectors in. That will fix the car. Just putting a one component on that might make, make it run intermittently better for a while and then they're going to recarbon trace, recarbon track. That's just not a fix. That's just a comeback waiting for your shop. If you follow a simple diagnostic driven plan where the testing data drives the next test as I have laid out and you can see that you can test these type of injectors on GDI engines, you too will be successful troubleshooting in your shop.